Welcome to Online Algebra 2. This is section 1-4, Solving Equations. So our objective for this section is to solve equations and to solve problems by writing equations. And we can use the properties of equality and inverse operations to solve our equations. So what does that mean? It means that we are going to uh, do the opposites in order to isolate the variable and to get our solution. All right, so an equation is a statement that two expressions are equal to each other. So this is an expression, right? It's just saying two more than x. This is an equation because now we have an expression equal to a different expression. And these expressions could be anything. Um, but in order for something to be an equation, right, we need to have this equal sign there. We need to say that these two sides are equal to each other. Uh, and in this section, we are, will use equations to model and solve all different types of problems. Okay, so some of the properties of equality that we can use to help us is first the reflexive property. That just means that um, the two sides of an equation are equal to each other if it has the same stuff on both sides. So for instance, we have a is equal to a and right whatever it is uh, is equal to is equal to they're the same, right? It's a reflection of each other reflexive property. The symmetric property says if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So we can reverse those two. Okay? And usually, typically, we use this because uh, we mostly like to put the variable on the left-hand side when we write our answers. Uh, so we can use the symmetric property to flip the equations around if we want to. And you can see in the example how that would work. Uh, transitive. It says that if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. And it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, the example is pretty good there. So 2.5 is the same thing as 2.5. And 2.5 and is the same thing as 5, 5 over 2. That means that 2.5 is equal to 5 over 2. Right? So we're just, we're saying that A is equal to the second thing. The second thing is equal to the third thing. That means the first thing has to be equal to the third thing as well. And the way substitution works is if A is equal to B, then you can replace A with B. So if A is equal to B, A, 9 plus A is equal to 15, uh, then also 9 plus B is equal to 15, right? As long as these two are equal, you can substitute one for the other. The other properties of equality is just going to be, just, uh, just be, just going to show us algebra's golden rule, right? All that this says is if you do one thing, if you do something to one thing, one side of an equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So for instance, if you start with this equation, if you add C to the left, you have to add C to the right. If you subtract C to the left, you have to subtract C to the right. Multiply and divide, but of course you cannot divide by zero. Okay, so. Solving an equation that contains a variable means finding all values of the variable that make the equation true. Sometimes it's one, uh, sometimes it's more than one, and sometimes it'll be uh, a lot, and mostly with inequalities that we're gonna get a lot of solutions. Uh, this value is the solution of the equation. To find the solution, isolate the variable on one side of the equation using inverse operations. So you do the opposite operations. So inverse operations are operations that undo each other. Addition undo, undo subtraction, multiplication division. If I have a square root, the inverse is to square both sides. Uh, and there's some more complicated th stuff that we can get into later, but those are all the, those are the basics, okay? So let's try a one-step equation. One-step equation is the most simple type of equation because it only takes one step to get to my answer. All right, so while this is very, very simple, let's make sure we understand exactly what's happening here. We see addition, x plus four. I pick the operation that undoes addition, so that's the opposite, so I subtract four. Whatever I do to the one side, I must do to the other side as well, 
We're left now with x plus 0. Bring down the equal sign, and we get negative 16. Now, a good habit to get into, something that we might not all do very often, is you should actually take your answer and substitute it back in to check it, see if it works. Uh, now, you might just be confident in your answer, especially with a one-step equation like this, but it is a good habit to get into. This is multiplication. 12 times b is equal to 18. To undo multiplication, we use division. Oh, but here's a problem. 18 over 12 does not divide easily, evenly. But it does reduce. Okay, so the answer, yes, is just 18 over 12. But of course, we should never leave a fraction in unreduced form. And we don't want to put it to a decimal. We want to leave it as a fraction, but we want to reduce it. Okay, so 3 over 2. We can factor a 6 out of both of them and cancel. Okay, multi step equations. Okay, now again, we're not going to see a lot of just one step equations in this course, right? We're going to, this is algebra two, we're going to go to a little bit more advanced type of equation, all right? So in this case, <clears throat> when I look at this equation, my job is to get all the, all the variables together first and then get them and then uh, solve for y. So my first step is to distribute the three. Now, when I solve equations, uh, with variables on both sides, I always like to bring the smaller coefficient to the bigger one, right? So I could subtract 6y from both sides, but that's going to give me a negative y on the right. So instead, I decide to collect the variables by combining the like terms and getting them all on the same side. So those two cancel, and now we have negative 27 plus 3y is equal to negative 9. Now, I could move the negative 9 to this side, but I want to get the y by itself, okay? So what I really want to do is now add 27 to both sides. That gives me 3y is equal to 18. Divide out the 3 to get the y by itself, and we're left with y is equal to 6. Take a minute, go back to the beginning, and double double check. So 27 my plus, negative 27 plus 36 is that equal to well parentheses first 18 or uh, three times three is nine. Yeah, that works. And here we go. So distribute first, and then get all the variables on the same side. So what we're going to do is 6x minus 3 minus 6x minus 8 is equal to 11x. Well, like terms on the same side, those two can just cancel each other. 6x minus 6x is 0. And that is negative 11 for the numbers equals 11x. And now just divide out the 11. And we get that x is equal to negative 1. Or symmetric property, uh, x is equal to negative 1. Usually we like to put the variable on the uh, left-hand side. So let's try a word problem. So flower carpets incorporate hundreds of thousands of brightly colored flowers as well as grass, tree bark, and sometimes fountains to form intricate designs and motifs. The flower carpet shown here from Grand Palace in Brussels, Belgium, has a perimeter of 200 meters. So what are the dimensions? And we see we have X and it's three times as big as it is, three times as long as it is wide. Okay, remember what perimeter means. Perimeter means that uh, the distance all the way around the outside. Okay, so we do know a few things. Uh, 
Okay, well, if we know this is a rectangle, we know that this is 3x and this is x as well. So, if I want to know the length and the width, we can say that 3x plus x all times 2, or plus another x and another 3x, is equal to 200. Okay, so I was able to take uh, the, the picture here and turn it into an equation that I could use. So 6x plus 2x is equal to 200. 8x, 200, by combining the like terms, divide out the 8, and we get that x is equal to 25. So that means that this is 25, and 3 times x, 25, and that 3x is going to be 75. So my uh, dimensions are uh, 25 by 75. An equation does not only have one solution. An equation that has no solution if no value of the variable makes the equation true. An equation that's true for every value is called an identity. And sometimes no value of the variable makes an equation true, right? And then that's what just what this says right here. So when you see this type of question, uh, equations with no solutions and uh, identities, Usually the question is going to ask you, is this equation always, sometimes, or never true? And you know you have something weird when all the variables cancel. So here's what I mean. So this is 4 plus 3x, right, 11 minus 7. And we do now the, the 6x minus 3x is 3x plus 5. So if I were to subtract 3x from both sides, now all the variables cancel out. And now we have a statement that says 4 is equal to 5. Well, you should know that 4 is not equal to 5. So this is never true. So the equation is never. Okay? If you had a 5 equal to 5, then it would always be true. Sometimes, well, this equation is sometimes true. It's true in y is equal to 6. Okay, It's not true any other time. It's only true for one specific number in this case. So when you look at these problems, always, sometimes, never true, if the variables all cancel out, it's either always or never true. If you get a solution, that's the sometimes true. All right. So the first one was never true. I'll give you a guess what you think this is going to happen here. So 6 minus 2 is 4x plus 5, and the 4 and 1 give me subtract 4x, and we get that 5 is equal to 5. So this is always true. This is an identity. Okay. Let's try the got it problems. All right, so 7 minus 4, so that's... 3x plus 6 on the left, uh, 3x plus 4 on the right, and so this is never true. These two cancel, 6 is not equal to 4. Now let's try this one. A little more complicated, but we can do it. 2x plus 3x minus 12. I'm just distributing right now, minus 12 plus x, so we get our 5x to 12, 5x minus 12, the variables cancel, 12, negative 12 and negative 12, and this is always true. All right, the next thing, uh, last type of problem here is called a literal equation. A literal equation is an equation that uses at least two different letters as variables. You can solve a literal, literal equation for any one of its variables by using the properties of equality. You can solve for a variable in terms of the other variable. So with literal equations, you are 
rearranging the expression. You are not going to get an answer because you can only solve for one variable in an equation, right? If you have two variables, you need two separate equations uh, to solve that, and that is what we'll study in chapter three. But for literal equations, we can rearrange the terms so that a different one is by itself. This equation is uh, relates temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. So it's Celsius equals five over nine times Fahrenheit minus 32. So right now, the C, let me rewrite that. Right now, the C is by itself. Okay, what the question says is I want this to be true. I want F by itself. So now we're not gonna get F is equal to a number. In some points, there's gonna be a C over here and some other stuff, but we go, when we get this answer, it's gonna be F equal to something. Okay, so, well, what do I wanna do first here? There's a couple different uh, things you could do. You could distribute the five over nine if I wanted to. Uh, I think a little bit easier to just multiply both sides because it's all one term. Multiply both sides by nine over five. So we have nine over five times Celsius. These two cancel equals F minus 32. And then just add 32 to both sides. And I'm going to use the symmetric property and put the F over here. And we have nine over five times the Celsius plus 32. Again, this is the solution. F is in terms of C. I got F by itself. I didn't get an answer. I don't have a number here. I still have this variable C flying around here, but I was able to rearrange this expression to the thing that I wanted to arrange it for. Let's try a got it problem. The equation K equals C plus 273 relates temperature uh, Kelvins and degrees Celsius. So if I want C by itself, and this one's pretty easy here, C would be equal to K minus 273, right? You just subtract 273 from both sides. Is this always, sometimes, or never true? Well, it's sometimes true. Because if you plug in a number for this, you're going to get only one answer for C. Right? So now pick a number. Pick a number in your head right here for K, 100. 100 minus 273 gives you negative 173. Okay, Kelvin, 273. 273 minus 273, that's zero. All right, so you're only getting, for every input, you're only getting one output. You're getting a lot of different answers depending on what your input is, but you're only going to get ever one answer. And that is something called a function that we'll talk about in Chapter 2. Okay. So again, you can look over the lesson check. I don't want to go through uh, all these, but uh, hopefully none of these prevent a big problem. Uh, let's look at a couple of these real quick. Uh, a couple literal equations. Solve for k. That means we're getting k by itself. There's two variables here. So again, for r minus 2k equals 15, the goal is not to get a number. The goal is to get k by itself. So I would subtract r from both sides. and divide out the negative two. So K would be eh, negative two. You don't want to really leave that in the denominator. So that would be negative 15 uh, plus R over two. You could also flip these around to have R minus 15 over two, but you know, whatever. Um, so the idea is to just get the variable by itself in, in some point. And that was 1-4.